Google Chrome's cookies phase out what you need to know. Sites will no longer have access to third-party cookies for 1% of Chrome users January 4th. Okay, okay. Full deprecation by the end of the year still depends on UK's competition and markets authority. I have a lot of opinions about this, but let's let him cook. Let's let Tim cook and then we'll come back, okay? One of the most critical topics of 2024, how Google Chrome plans to rewrite digital advertising in the browser with privacy sandbox proposals and how companies adopt the technologies or don't is finally ramping up. On January 4th, Google is releasing a new browser feature called Tracking Protection, which, when activated, will cut off sites access to third-party cookies. Tracking Protection will be activated for 1% of randomly selected groups of Chrome users globally, marking the year's first notable step towards third-party cookie deprecation. Oh, look at that. Isn't that crazy? Google's looking out for people. Look at that. This is fantastic. I'm so happy that Google's concerned about me being tracked by third-party cookies. I mean, I'm so happy that Google would most certainly never use this to their advantage by being the only people that can track you across sites and thus using your data to be able to sell more targeted advertisement while stripping out the competition completely and making it into a monopoly. <laughs> I, certain will, I certainly wouldn't think that would ever happen. It's not like Google ever doesn't be evil. Fucking Google. I swear, the level of awful Google is, is outstanding. I'm not saying I like third-party cookies. Okay, I'm sick of being tracked. I am sick of being tracked and all that shit, yes. Like, I don't care that Twitter monetizes my usage of their site. I use a free site in which I give it data and it should be able to sell me ads. Fine. Not upset. But... This Google thing. Those who are part of the test will see an option to browse with more privacy. <laughs> Yet ads still work on Google. Crazy. When they open Chrome on desktop or Android, the rollout beyond the 1% will happen gradually in the second half of the year. If a site in a test can't function, Chrome will surface the option to disable tracking protection and revert to using third-party cookies. Naturally, there are a lot of unknowns, especially since full deprecation by the end of the year will depend on these tests and whether the UK's Competition and Markets Authority agrees. Here's what we know. A sense of urgency hampered by lack of resource. Okay, while the adoption has been very slow on the buy side, there has been a step change in urgency. Paul Bannister, in chief strategy officer at publish management platform Raptive, which has been running the protection audience API renamed from Fledge in April, in ad auctions since September, when Google made privacy sandbox application programming interfaces publicly available, he said that since the beginning of December, more marketers have been keen to start testing over the next three months. But there is a gulf between the desire to test and the resources available to invest in new product development in order to execute a full shift to privacy-preserving technologies. Can someone explain whatever I just read better? I don't see how this is anything but Google locking down competition. Absolutely. Let's break it down. Paul Bannister and company. Paul Bannister is chief strategy officer at a company named Raptives. Raptive is a publisher management platform, which uh, means it is... Oh, dude, okay, yo. Yo, dog. I, like... I don't need that much explanation. Can, can we calm down? Could you be more terse? I ain't got time to read all of that. Paul Bannister from Raptive is using Google's new Privacy Sandbox API for ad auctions since September. More marketers are interested in testing these privacy-focused tools. However, there's a challenge. They want to test, but developing new products for this requires more resources than currently available. I literally still don't know what that means. And I don't think Google does either. There are those who still in denial. And unfortunately, <laughs> I don't think 2024 is going to be an easy year for them, said Anne Mil Milosevic, co-founder of consultant Sparrow Advisors. Why do all these companies sound like there's some sort of weird shadow form of just Google. Jack Sparrow? It's not Jack Sparrow. What are all these advisor companies? They're just different names for mafia. <laughs> it's Captain Jack Sparrow. Data launderers? It sounds like data launderers. I'm just curious, what is the point of all this? As tech adoption before it, it's a chicken and egg situation. Tech companies need demand before building the tech, and the business imperative to shift buying away from cookies have been lacking. But Chrome's deadlines finally solidifies that, she added. Still, 1% is still too minor for many. Beginning with just 1% of browsing being impacted, there'll be little to no immediate impact on things like tracking, targeting, or measuring in the short 
short term, said Paul Bland, head of strategy again. Head of Biddable. Oh, this is a different Paul. Sorry, wrong Paul. Head of Biddable at Havas Media Network UK. We need more insight around the effectiveness of the new solution and the breadth of the adoption across the ad tech landscape before we draw conclusions. My only curious question is how does this not give Google ultimate authority. Raptive has been scaling up the numbers of protective audience APIs running in auctions since September, but the findings are too narrow for now. While targeting is working, the next conversation is getting data on effectiveness. Our agency buyer, who isn't currently testing, said they wouldn't expect to see any impact until at least 30% of cookies were deprecated. Can I just throw something out there? Here is the reality. Google will never create something that's going to hurt them. Consulting agencies will never create something to hurt them. Governments will never create something they understand. That's kind of my three general rules of thumb, is companies don't hurt themselves. Governments don't know what they're doing. Consultancies are the devil. That's kind of like how I position my thought process. And so when I'm reading all of this, and Google's like, we're making privacy better, there's an angle that I'm just I don't quite understand yet. There's something there. Government don't know what they're doing is the only W take in this. <laughs> the government's like, oh, we're not even sure here. I'm definitely a bit curious. You know that there's, there's strategy to this. You know that somebody is playing this to make a lot of money. And so it has to be reducing some sort of competition. You preemptively hurt yourself, e.g. supermarkets asking for ID for energy drinks before expected government regulations, even though it didn't exist, or charging for plastic bags. Well, charging for plastic bags has, uh, I mean, the crazier one was was when the government's banned plastic bags, and then it ended up using more plastic. Like, that was funny. And then California was like, man, we got that wrong. And so California actually went back on the plastic bag business, and now you can get it, but you just have to get charged for it. Okay, stupid, but whatever, it worked. But then the better part is that Colorado is now officially passing the plastic bag thing. Like, how funny is that? Is that the government did something, didn't do the research, it turned out it was wrong, California went back on it. Hey, plus one for government for going back and actually doing some research and doing a good thing. I was personally impressed that California did anything at all that was based on facts or logic. Like, good job. That was a good job. I was very shocked by that, but they did it. But then somehow Colorado and everybody else like, hell yeah, hold my beer, we're doing this. You know, it's just like, where did you get, where did you get, dude, the government sucks, okay? I don't know what people are expecting is going to happen. Oh, uh, we only use reusable and paper here in a VT. Haven't seen plastic in years. Wild. I just complimented California and I'm from Montana, see? I'm, I'm based, okay? I can recognize a good decision when I see it. Figuring out how to reinvent the digital ad ecosystem in the browser all at once encompasses a raft of features like targeting, ad frequency, and measurement. For now, targeting is the most solid. Bannister estimates that Google is about 75% there in terms of what they need to supply to the industry. Oh, Okay, so Google will supply to the industry. Okay, great. Including better documentation and improved features. Measurement will break, said Eric Wheeler, CEO at publisher ad tech platform 33 across. Programmatic measurement was founded on a third party cookie, so we can expect to see many data errors. Google Analytics will be able to track what occurs in its walled garden which will cause big upstream challenges. The agency buyer added that the industry might need to rethink historical benchmarks since many marketers use pixel solutions across platforms like Meta. As Google increases the 1% of users who have access to tracking protection in the second half of 2024, there will be shifts in auction dynamics. With a shrinking pool of third-party cookie inventory available, we can also expect to see rising CPMs. Oh, really? Crazy. Really, for those that don't know what CPM, it stands for cost per mile. So cost per mile, here's a here's a good example. On YouTube, how I get paid by YouTube is when I release a video, they sell out ads for say $12 to $18 cost per mile. They'll pay me somewhere between like $1.25 to $2 RPM, rate per mile. Mile equals 1,000 views, obviously, because miles are 1,000 feet per mile. And so it was a natural transition to go from 1,000 feet per mile to 1,000 views per mile. What the F is a mile? A mile is how, how far you can throw a stone in 25 throws, 57 throws. It's a 57 throw measurement. It's one of the most based measurements out there. The fact that this is what is gonna happen, this just means Google makes more money. That's all that means. YouTube, okay, so there's this, there's this thing that happens, for those that don't know, there's this one problem that exists, which is a company like YouTube has two levers in which they can make money on. More ads, more expensive ads. Now they're adding a third level, uh, lever obviously which is membership so the more membership they can sell the more kind of defined money they'll make so they have more ads more cost to ads 
And so they can't really raise this lever because this lever is based on an auction system. So December, it costs a lot. That lever just goes up. January, that lever goes way down because people aren't buying ads. So if you can artificially constrain the supply, meaning you make that lever go up, they automatically win. Show us the third lever again. Third lever is YouTube membership. Don't forget that the lever that lowers creators a share in revenue. Oh yeah, then there's also the fourth lever, which is just lower the amount you pay creators. That one's a little bit harder because you have to be somewhat concerned about competition. I mean, I'm not saying that Twitter's great competition for video. Mr. B said he wouldn't do it. I'm not saying that Rumble is great competition. I've never even been on Rumble. I just know the name because I get emails about converting all my videos to Rumble. Like, I don't know a lot about the other platforms, but I do know they exist. And whenever you keep putting pressure on the creators, you'll eventually cause migrations. That lever is really hard to move. So they typically don't move that lever. TikTok CPM is awful. It's not that bad. It's like all shorts in the industry. The problem with shorts is that a short is like 30 seconds of view time. So you can't show an ad every short. It wouldn't make any sense. So you show like one ad for every 50 shorts. So that's like 150th. You should expect like 150th, 120th the amount of money from a, from a short versus a, a long, as I like to call it. That's just the way it works. Because you watch a ton of shorts and then you get one ad. So they have to split it. Unless you get 10x the viewership uh, too. You get a lot more viewership on shorts, sort of. The problem about shorts is either you get a lot of viewership or you get none. I don't understand shorts. Terrible at them. Okay, well, anyways, I don't really need to know anything more about ad tech and all this. It just seems like whatever is going to happen, Google wins, consulting companies win, the government will say they won, and the only loser at the end of the day will be you. I hope that there's less ads. Second thing I might do is buy some Google stock. If they're successful, they just raised the amount of money they're going to make by 20 to 30%. <laughs> this is not financial advice. Again.